Hi everybody, I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct and welcome to our YouTube channel. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to compare two of our top selling three wheel outdoor mobility scooters of 2023. To my right, your left, we have the Afis Scooter S model in the three wheel configuration. It's made by Afikim and to my left, your right, we have the Pride Baja Raptor 2. And this is the newest model by Pride, the fastest model. Now, we're gonna go ahead and compare these two scooters, do a really in-depth comparison, talk about the specs, torture test them off-road, take them on a race, and talk about the pros and the cons of each one. Now, it's gonna be a really unbiased review. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on the pros and the cons of each model and tell you who I think uh, each model is best for. Now, before I get started with this video, I just wanna mention two quick things. One, if you want a copy of our brand new product catalog, just go on over to our website, mobilitydirect.com, fill out the form on the catalog request page, which you can access by clicking on the green button at the top of every page that says free catalog. And once you fill out that form, you can expect one in your mailbox within one to two weeks tops. I also wanna say that if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're automatically entered into our monthly giveaway raffle. We give away a free mobility scooter once a month to a random subscriber. So if you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and you could be the next lucky winner. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the specifications here and compare each scooter. Uh, starting with the weight capacity. To my right, the Afa Scooter S model can support up to 600 pounds if you upgrade the suspension. The standard model has a 500 pound weight capacity, whereas the Raptor 2 has a 400 pound weight capacity. So if it's a weight capacity that you're concerned about, the S model is probably gonna be the better option for you. The top speed on this model is nine and a half miles per hour with the standard motor package. You can upgrade it though and get around 12 to 12 and a half miles per hour. On the Raptor, there's no upgrade option for the speed. It's a solid 14 miles per hour, which is the, pretty much the top speed you're gonna get out of any scooter that we carry. So if you need something for speed, the Raptor's probably for you. All right, so as far as the travel range with the Afikim scooter on the standard battery package, you're gonna get about 28 to 35 miles on a full charge, depending on the weight capacity and the load. With the Raptor, it's rated at getting around 19 to 31 miles, depending on the load. So about 31 miles if you have a 200 pound load, closer to 19, 20 miles with a full load. I would like to also point out that with the Africam scooters, we're the only dealer that you're allowed to order these scooters with lithium batteries right from the factory. It will not void your warranty and you can get up to like 90 miles per charge with the right lithium batteries. So if you're interested in a lithium battery upgrade and you really wanna go cross country with this thing, you can do it. In fact, we broke a world record and went for 24 straight hours using 135 amp hour lithium batteries and we have that on our YouTube. It's pretty awesome, check it out. Uh, so in terms of travel range, you have way more with the Afikim. If you upgrade and even with the standard option, you get a bit more. As far as the overall length on these, the Afikim scooter's overall length is 61 inches and the overall length on the Raptor is 59 inches. Now the width is really what matters, especially when you're going through a doorway. They both will fit through a commercial doorway and most residential doorways. The overall width is 27 inches on the Afis Scooter S model. If you get the extra wide tires, which is good for going on sand, uh, it's gonna bring that overall width up to about 35 inches, at which point you won't be able to go through a standard doorway. With the Raptor, the overall width is 27.12 inches. So just over 27 inches. That's gonna go through most doorways just fine. These aren't indoor scooters, but it's nice to know you, you can take them through most doorways. While we move our way down the spec sheet list here, we have our seat to ground height on the Raptor is 28 inches and on the Afikim it's 26 inches, which is, it's, so it's seated slightly lower. You can kind of tell the seat's a little lower on the Afikim. So if you're shorter, it might be easier to get in and out because it is lower when it comes to getting on the seat itself. The uh, Raptor is, is pretty tall, it's, it's high up there. Now they both have the 16 inch tires and the floorboard looks to be about the same height on both of them. Now moving down the list here, we have the tires, again, both three inches by 16 inch diameter 
on both models. That's why we chose these two scooters to compare them to one another. Now the turning radius on the Afikim scooter is going to be 56 inches, so it's going to have a better turning radius to do a U-turn compared to the Raptor, which has a 60 inch turning radius. Uh, and that's pretty much going to wrap up the specs. All right, so something else that I want to talk about is the storage capabilities of each model. Now with the Afikim Afa scooter, we have a lockable front storage and you also have the option to get either a locking storage basket like this one which attaches to the back of the seat or you can get a traditional cage style basket like you can with the raptor these are the cage style baskets they go into the hitch receiver of the back of the seat and it's applicable or compatible with the Afikim and the raptor too now the Raptor 2 has under seat storage, which I'm going to throw on the screen for a second, and that is lockable. It's got a nice amount of space in there as well. Uh, it does not have front storage. So they both pretty much have similar type of storage capabilities. Now with the Afikim, you can actually get a large tote, which is kind of like a large Tupperware container, which I'm going to throw on the screen for you, but you have to either get the weather canopy or the two-person seat in order for that to work. So there's some restrictions when it comes to that. All in all, they both have pretty good amount of storage. I will say that the Afikim does have a dual cup holder built into the uh, frame and to the uh, covers here in the back where the tiller assembly is, whereas the Raptor 2 has more of a pocket for some of your personal belongings. Now, one other thing I want to mention too is that the Afa Scooter S3 has a little brother known as the C3. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit less on the width, uh, smaller tires, 13 inch tires as opposed to 16 inch tires, but overall you're going to get that same type of peace of mind with the three year service agreement and it handles really well off road. We have tons of videos on this model, torture testing it, comparing it to the other models. So check out our YouTube video channel and go to the playlist for the Afikim scooters if you want to learn more about the compact version. Now the warranty for the Raptor is going to give you a lifetime limited on the frame, six months on the battery, two years on the drivetrain and the electronics. So basically you get the same warranty for the parts. Now here's the kicker. With Afikim scooters, you get a three year labor contract, which means that for three years, if you file a warranty claim, labor and basically service to come to your home is included. On the Raptor, you get one year of labor included. That's the main difference. Now enough talking about these boring specs. Let's take these things outdoors and go for a real ride. Torture test them, speed test them, incline test them, terrain test them, the whole nine yards. Follow me, we're gonna take you outdoors and have some fun. All right, here we are with uh, Uncle Chuck, famous Uncle Chuck. He's gonna do some uh, little test riding here. We're at the local Imperial River uh, boat ramp in Bonita Springs. So why don't you go ahead and put it up to uh, full speed and let's just give them a little taste of what it's like to ride the Raptor 2. This is half, like low speed right now. He's on half speed right now, okay. Speed all the way right now. Going up to full speed now. Five miles an hour. All right, so your, your max throttle, yeah. half speed, now he's turning it up and he is clearly outpacing me. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna do a little FPV ride. One thing that I noticed though is that the uh, Raptor does not have the uh, USB charging port on it like the Afikim does. It actually has two, which is pretty nice. You can charge your electronic devices using the power of the scooter batteries. So it's got um, no USB charging port, no ability to bring the, the handlebar closer to you or further away from you. You can't tilt it, uh, but it, you know, hey, it has the speed. So I'm gonna take you on a little ride. We've got the camera on super wide mode and the thumb throttle's over here. So you have to use your right hand to control the throttle. Unfortunately, uh, with some of the bigger scooters, that's just how it is. Even with the Afikim, the throttle's on the right side. So just going off road here, handles pretty well. Even with the camera in my hand, I'm able to maneuver it on this uh, rough grass 
single-handedly. Transitioning from pavement to grass and back and forth is no problem. So I'm gonna move it into high-speed mode. And as you can see, it takes off. We're going pretty quick, pretty fast. It picks up speed and even in full speed mode, turning with one hand is not that hard. Awesome little scooter. So we're hitting that top speed of 13, almost 14. There we go, 14 miles per hour. Zooming. Let's go over the speed bump with a little bit of slower speed so we don't feel it too much. I am riding with one hand, but that's how we do our ride along videos. We wanna show you how it controls with just one hand and it, it controls just fine. Now I'd like to point out, it does have a little storage unit down there. Good amount of floor space. Um, doesn't have the, the depth that I would like to see, but I mean, it can't have it all. You know, it, it's got enough floor space for me. I have a 12, size 12 US shoe. And with my feet all the way back against the back, you can see the charging ports right there. My feet are up against that back wall. I've got about enough room for another two and a half, three inches. So if you have a, fi a size 15 shoe or above, maybe not the scooter for you. Handles very well. And if you want to know what it's like to sit in the seat and be in the uh, cockpit, so to speak, this is what it's like. So I'm going to do the same thing now with the Afikim and we'll compare some of the differences here. All right, so here I am with the Afikim S3 and just want to point out a couple things here. I've got my handlebar pretty far up in front of me, so if I want to bring it closer to me, I have to use this lever and I'm gonna do it with both hands here. So you push down here and then you can bring the handlebars closer to you, which is nice. Unfortunately, you can't do that on the Raptor, but um, you know, there's a, there's a few differences, obviously. Speed, it has the Afi scooter beat. It can't keep up with the uh, Raptor, but we have a nice ergonomic handlebar for the throttle on the Afi scooter, which I think customers are gonna enjoy a little bit more than the thumb throttle pad that's on the Raptor. The dash is pretty much, you know, same deal. Shows the battery charge, the speed, etc. Light switch is here. Manual handbrake assist. It's to assist the automatic braking system. You don't need to use this. As soon as you let go of the throttle, the brakes are automatically gonna engage. But you can turn the automatic braking system off by using this switch temporarily. And of course, like all mobility scooters, there's a lever in the back attached to the motor to disengage the automatic brakes completely. Uh, you have the light switch, the turn signal switch, half speed, full speed mode, horn. And then we're talking about on the, um, how on the Raptor, you don't have the charging port up high like you do here. And you also have two charging ports that are USB charging ports. So you can charge your smartphone devices anything that's USB powered. So let's go ahead and um, start doing a ride along review and see what it's like to sit in the seat while driving the Afi scooter. It's very, very smooth. Tops out at about nine and a half miles per hour unless you get the upgraded motor package. But you know, that's definitely the takeaway with the Raptor, you're gonna have more speed. And a lot of customers just simply want a scooter that's gonna go fast, but off-road capabilities, I think the Afikim scooters are gonna be able to um, provide you a smoother ride when going off-road. I don't doubt that if you um, try to go on grass and you know your average lawn, you're, you're gonna feel the same in both scooters. It's not gonna have any problems going on grass. But once you start getting into like really rough terrain, the Afikim scooter doesn't have those big anti-tip wheels in the back dragging on the grass. And the suspension to me seems a little bit smoother. Now I also want to point out here that my feet are all the way back against the, um, the shroud cover here where the batteries are. And look, I got way more room. I got like five or six inches to slide forward. So if you've got big feet, it's definitely going to be a factor. Also the Raptor, when I turn, the handlebars kind of start hitting my knee and I can't do anything about that because the handlebar doesn't tilt forward you can't adjust the tilt of the handlebars on the raptor but remember on this one you can so i mean if you if you have the handlebars tilted down like i have it now and you take a turn 
yeah, the handlebar is going to hit your knee. But if you were to adjust the handlebar up, there's no chance it's going to hit you, which is something that I really like about the Afikim scooters. And I can slide my seat forward if it seems like the handlebars are too far away from you and you have it all the way forward. Um, you can slide the seat forward and you can rotate the seat. On the Raptor, you cannot rotate the seat, but you can slide it forward. So right now, it does, doesn't feel like it's too far for me, but there's a little lever down here. That's the rotation lever in the middle. And then off to the left of that, actually to the right of that, you want to give that little action and then you could slide forward. So if you want to slide forward and be closer to the handlebars, now I'm really close and it's no problem. And now it's closer and it still won't hit my leg. I've got plenty of room there, plenty of clearance. Handlebars aren't in the way. Uh, now I'm six foot, about 205 pounds. These scooters are heavy duty. The Raptor can hold 400 pounds and the Afikim can hold 500 pounds. So, I mean, for people that are a little bit bigger and have bigger legs than I do, I can foresee that, you know, being an issue. The handlebars on the Raptor are gonna rub up against your leg. You're not gonna have a lot of knee space. If you have big feet and you wear a big, big shoe, you're gonna feel really cramped up. So those are my overall thoughts on the comparison video. Uh, this is just an honest review. And I know there are gonna be some things that Africam don't like, about this review and there's also going to be some things that pride doesn't like about this review but you know what we keep it honest and that's the way we're going to keep it we're not gonna you know beat around the bush if we see something that we think is a con we're going to tell you about it and of course we're also going to tell you the pros so enjoy all right so we're going to do a little off-road testing with the baja raptor 2 here we've got a nice little paved street that transitions it's got about a two inch dip into the gravel section and I'm gonna do a U-turn there and then take it on over into the really rough area. I'm gonna start off in low speed setting, put it in forward mode here, and just take it nice and easy for the first test going in low speed. Feels pretty smooth. You wanna be careful taking turns on a three-wheel scooter. You don't wanna go full speed, but it feels pretty good. And let's see here, I'm gonna take it through some rougher terrain. It handles it. The power in the motor really allows it to keep powering through these sections. So let's see uh, what it feels like going full speed now. Half speed is uh, what we were at just now. I'm gonna go to, well, it's really high and low. So I was on the low speed setting. I'm gonna switch it to the high speed setting. And let's do that same little path and see what it feels like. Now I'm gonna slow down on the turns. Obviously with the three-wheel scooter, you wanna slow down on the turns. But it feels good. Like I said, that motor is powerful, so it really has no problem getting through those rough bits of terrain here. It almost feels like it's peeling out. But it's definitely a, a rough area here. This is our probably roughest part of the environment that we like to take our scooters on and, and see what they're made of when it comes to off-road climbing and just, you know, various types of terrain. And I'm gonna give it a passing grade. Feels very, very smooth. The suspension's doing a great job. All right, so now I'm on the Afikim Afis Scooter Model S three-wheel. This is probably the most comparable model that we have made by Afikim and it travels nine and a half miles per hour so it's a little slower so I'm just going to go ahead and start in full speed mode and take the same path see how it feels it's got the same 16 inch tires on the front and the rear as the Raptor now I'm gonna have to see but at first it feels like the S3 is smoother, like the suspension's working a little bit better, even on that rough patch there. I'm gonna have to do it one more time though to really feel it. Um, I know that on the front of both of these scooters, we're gonna have a fork style suspension and on the rear, we've got coilovers. 
but the manufacturer doesn't really provide too much detail as to what exactly the type of coilover suspension is. They both look pretty durable, like there's some high quality springs, but just off of the initial feeling, I feel like the Apis scooter is just a little smoother, especially when going over that area that I just went over. But they're both pretty darn comparable, I'll be honest. So they're both going to get a passing grade for the off-road test. It's not that noticeable, but I would say maybe it's the seat that's bigger on this one, but it feels a little bit like it's smoother when going off-road on the Afikim. Just initial thoughts. So we'll go ahead and keep testing them out, comparing them against each other. Again, the top speed is definitely not as fast, but you can get the upgraded motor package on the Afa scooter that'll bring you to about 12, 12 and a half miles per hour. Still not gonna perform uh, better speed-wise as the Raptor, which does 14 miles per hour. All right, so we're now gonna demo its climbing ability and off-road ability in a different environment. It's got some uh, pretty rough dips and nice little incline right there. So Chuck, why don't you go ahead and uh, Start running it through these areas that what we would call a little bit more squirrely than the others. Nice little incline there, even at... Ooh. Okay, so it's it's not moving, huh? Nope. Okay, so the incline factor seems like Andy seems like it's not going. Good to know. I Let's... think my anti-tips are dug in too, aren't they? Yeah, it looks like the anti-tip wheels dug in a little bit on the, on the floor here and picked up some uh, debris, but I don't think that's causing you to to drag it that's on the way backwards yeah I started it started digging out of there, yep so. but interesting to see that on that incline it wasn't able to make it in the slow speed setting let's try that again with the high speed setting and see what happens all right so we're going to go ahead and redo that test but instead of being in low speed we're going to be in high speed you did see here that the anti-tip wheels dragged a little bit so you know if you are going to be doing some dips and jumping down a areas that need some ground clearance, that's something to consider. All right, Chuck, let's go ahead and run it again. So now he's in high speed mode. I think with a little momentum, it should handle it. Oh yeah, but it dragged a good amount. All right, so now we're on some rough gravel, handling it just fine. Why don't you do that same path one more time? Yeah. So I just I want to show you. I take it in a slow mode, but I just didn't get a run at it before. And look at, you can see the anti-tip wheels really dragged out. So that's something to consider, folks. Those anti-tip wheels, you can't remove them. First of all, it's not safe, and it will void your warranty if you do. Now, I do want to show that you can move them up. You see the secondary hole there? You can actually slide those up, it seems like. So we might do that here and, and see what the difference is, and that would probably reduce the dragging and probably improve its climbing ability if those weren't dragging. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. So we're, we're doing it on low speed again this time. We're gonna get a little bit more momentum this time. Oh yeah, you could see it bottomed out there. Okay, well, it's handling it. I mean, it's definitely powerful enough to handle it. It's just, you know, a little squirrely when you've got those anti-tip wheels and you're going over obstacles that have some clearance to them. So let's run that test again with the Appa scooter next, just for gigs. We're doing it again here, and it's handling. Good to know. Thank you, Chuck. All right, so now we've got the Appa scooter S3, and Chuck's gonna take the scooter on the same path that we just went on with the Raptor to see how it performs. Ready when you are, Chuck. Let's go ahead and see how it does. Half speed. So he's on half speed mode. Trying to see how it does without too much momentum at first on this little incline, which it dips down, then it dips up. And there you go, it's handling it. And, right through. and on that little bump there where he goes from the grass to the uh, sidewalk, those anti-tip wheels did not get in the way at all. It handled it just fine. So let's go ahead and turn it up a bit to speed, uh, full speed and see what happens. Really put it through the ringer. There you go. There you go. Boom. No problem. Nice. All right. So there you have it, folks. I mean, I think without the anti-tip wheels, the Raptor would have performed a little bit better. Um, but of course, they're there for safety. And overall, uh, I think Chuck is uh, 
showing, I mean, I can clearly see that it's a little bit more stable, especially when transitioning from the grass to that piece of sidewalk. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, it's smoother. Chuck, Chuck says it's a little bit smoother. He doesn't have the mic with him, but I could tell just from the, the camera angle here. So great job. All right, so that's gonna conclude our comparison video. I hope you've enjoyed. All in all, I think these are two really awesome scooters. Now, my overall thoughts are that the Afikim scooter is gonna have a much better service agreements for three years compared to the one year. The warranty is a little bit better as well. You've got tons of upgrade options. It's a little smoother when it comes to off-roading, and these are all things that you should consider. Having that three-year service agreement is a huge peace of mind. Now, if you're someone that just simply wants speed and you're gonna be cruising on flat surfaces, not really beating it up too much off-road, then the Raptor 2 might be a better option. But if you're gonna be using it off-road and really abusing it as far as going on rugged terrain all the time, having that three-year repair contract and an extended warranty is probably something that you want to lean towards a little bit more. That with the fact that there are so many upgrade options from the 600 pound weight capacity, the upgraded motor for speed or torque, you have just the weather canopy upgrade, tons of upgrade options for the Afikim scooter, whereas the Raptor really doesn't have too many options. You can even get a foot pedal with the Afikim. You can do so much with it, and if you visit our website, you'll learn more about those custom options. Again, I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct. If you have any questions about these products, don't hesitate to call our non-commissioned sales experts. We'd love to hear from you, and we'd love a chance to earn your business. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day. Before you go, please don't forget to visit our website, mobilitydirect.com, and click on the green button that says Free Catalog to claim your very own free catalog. Just fill out the short form, and it should get to you in about a week or two max. I just want to take this time to personally thank each and every one of you for watching this video. We couldn't do it without our subscribers. So if you like our content, please go to YouTube, search for Mobility Direct, and subscribe to our channel. You can enable notifications. That way you'll get notified whenever we release new videos. We're constantly making great videos. We have tons of playlists that range from repair videos, unboxing videos, research and development, and much, much more. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and ask any questions in the comment section below. We love hearing from our audience, whether it's feedback, comments, or suggestions for a new video topic. We love hearing from you. None of this could be done without our loyal audience. We hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching again. Have a great day.